The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome to the world of fantasy that is your imagination. What am I saying? One's imagination, a fantasy world? Nonsense. Rubbish. I should have said the world of reality. For what can possibly be more real than that which the imaginative powers of the brain conjure up? You question that? Consider, then, what happened to lovely, imaginative Nikki Carpenter. You can't be serious. You know I am, Nikki. But what you're saying, it's nonsense. You think so? You really think so, Nikki? Alicia, Amanda, imagination didn't kill them. True enough, my darling. But imagination, yours, will kill you. <laughs> mystery drama, Murder to Perfection, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Mercedes McCambridge and Joseph Campanella. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. deny that what we call imagination is the greatest creative, yes, and destructive force known to the human race. The paintings of the Sistine Chapel existed inside the head of Michelangelo before he expressed them on canvas. Bach, Beethoven, Brahms heard their music in imagination before setting the notes to paper. This being so, you will understand how the story I am about to tell you, though bizarre, strange, macabre in the extreme, is true in every detail. Nikki, dear. Yes, Bill? It's 11.30. The funeral chapel. They'll be closing it for the night and a half an hour. How about going home? Alicia looks so lifelike there in the casket, it... I find it so hard to believe she's dead. I know. He murdered her, Bill. No, Nick. Yes, he did. I know you think the sun rises and sets on your brother, but he murdered my sister. He murdered Alicia as surely as she lies dead in that coffin. Nikki, dearest, you're tired and overwrought. You've been here all day, all night. You're exhausted thinking things that simply can't be so, saying things that make no sense. I loved Alicia. Why, in the year of their marriage, he was the most devoted husband a wife could ask for. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Oh, Guy, come in. Bill, Nikki. I thought everyone would be gone by now. But I could spend a little time alone with Alicia. We were just leaving, Guy. No, I'm not. I want to be with Alicia as much as possible until she's buried tomorrow. That's exactly the way I feel. Oh, you liar. Nikki. You killed her. You murdered her in cold blood. Nikki's overtired guy. Over. Yes, of course, but he... But he is so I don't... I don't understand. I mean, to say a thing like that. Well, it's true. You know it is. Now, look here, Nikki. Alicia fell or jumped from our apartment window. There was no one else in the apartment at the time, not even me. I was at my office downtown, so... Just where'd you get this crazy, wild idea that I killed her? I don't know. Well, you will. What do you mean? I mean that I'm going to prove that you murdered her. If it takes every cent I have in the world, if I have to dedicate the rest of my Bill, life to it... take her home and call a doctor. She needs sedation. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Nikki. Nikki, sweetheart, haven't you looked at her long enough? Guy will pay for killing you, Alicia. <laughs> I promise you 
Yes, Nicky Carpenter. Oh, hello, Jacques. No. No, I'm not ready to announce my latest designs yet. <laughs> Denim and suede combo. Where did you hear that? I'm sorry, Jacques. I'm not telling. Not this early. Yes, just as soon as I'm ready to announce, I'll make sure that you're the first one to know. Bye. <laughs> yes. Oh, of course. Oh, darling, what a lovely surprise. Hey, I'm not interrupting you in the midst of a creative brainstorm, am I, dear? Oh, the man I madly love and I'm going to marry could never be an interruption. But this visit is unexpected. Well, I've got something serious to talk over with you. Oh, uh huh? Yeah, it's about my brother Guy. Yes. I, uh, well, I, I, I find this a little awkward, Nikki. Awkward? Why? Well, you and I are engaged, and that guy, he's my brother. So the whole situation... Nikki, have you hired a private detective agency to check up on Guy? Yes. But why? Because he murdered my sister, Alicia, and I intend to prove that he did. Oh, come on now, Nikki. How can you go on saying such a thing, thinking such a thing? What, what ever gave you the idea in the first place? Guy, for one. Guy? I don't like him. I never have. Charming, yes, loaded with charm and handsome and witty, and in my opinion, a deceitful fraud. He just rubs you the wrong way. Even if everything you say is true, it doesn't make him a murderer. Well, I think differently. But you must have a reason, something more than, than just disliking someone. I have. Alicia fell or jumped to her death from the window of their 12-story apartment. Accident. Suicide, perhaps, not murder. Yes, murder. But how in heaven's name can you say... Because Alicia was scared to death of heights in all her life when we were kids together. She wouldn't dare go near an open window more than two stories above the ground. So what was she doing at that open window 12 stories above the ground? I don't know. But it certainly doesn't make a murderer out of my brother. Not on the face of it, no. Guy loved Alicia. Why would he murder her? For the quarter of a million he got from her insurance. Honey, you're letting that imagination you're so famous for run away with you. I may be known for my imagination, but the private detective I hired isn't. What does that mean? I didn't know that Guy had lived in Europe for nearly 15 years. You never told me. It never came up. But what's that got to do with... He was out of touch with you, completely, totally out of touch all those years, right? Well, yes. I, I mean, I had no idea where he was. Or Did he... you know that he'd been married twice while living abroad? What? No. And that both wives died under what is usually called mysterious circumstances, leaving your brother more than a half million in cash? Good Lord, no. I, I, I never knew this. Guy has never told me anything about any of this. Well, maybe you ought to ask him about it. Well, to be honest about it, Nikki, I, I, I've never cared much for Guy either, but that, that's neither here nor there. Oh, I think it is. And it certainly confirms my feelings about him. Feelings aren't facts. And it's facts that stand up in a court of law. And that's where you're going to find yourself if you don't drop this whole ridiculous thing. Guy intends to sue you if you don't. Sue you for defamation of character. And as a lawyer, I can tell you, he'd win, hands down. Unless you could prove your accusations, hands down. Well, then I have nothing to worry about. He murdered his first two wives. He murdered my sister. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And before I'm through, I'll prove it. <laughs> you want? I don't think it's a matter of what I want, but what you want. May I come in? There's nothing I want from you, Guy. Oh, you do. Believe me, you just don't know it. Yet. However, if you're not interested... No, no. Wait. Come in. I knew you'd change your mind. You seem very sure of yourself. Well, I'm sure of you, anyway. You see, Nikki... You're gifted with a vivid imagination. At least, so they say in the fashion company. Well, they have to manufacture news. They exaggerate. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. They don't exaggerate in the slightest. I just proved that. You proved it? I knew once I had something you wanted, 
your imagination would invent all sorts of interesting possibilities. And you'd be unable to turn me away until you found out. You're very clever. Well, what do you want? I beg your pardon. What is it I want? Well, one thing you want is peace of mind. The ability to do your work. Another thing you want is to go on living in this very swank penthouse apartment, enjoying the fruits of the fortune you possess. Nikki, I can take all of that away from you. Oh, can you? And will. Unless you, as they say, call off the hounds. The private detectives. The private detectives. There'll be no calling off of the hounds, Guy. All right. Then I shall sue you for defamation of character. Sue for every penny you possess. I have not defamed you. Neither I nor the private detectives have said a word to anyone. But I have. You? Of course. I knew you were taking precautions to keep your skirts clean until you could prove your suspicions. So, I upset your precautions merely by dropping the right words in the right place. Amanda Jordan being one of the right places. That poor, sad alcoholic. Alcoholic. Yes. Sad? Yes. Poor? No. Dripping with money. That's why I'm marrying her on the 10th. You are marrying... You object? I, I, Save your breath. Do you no good. The point is, being alcoholic, Amanda talks a storm. She also gets around. What you're doing to me, Nikki or trying to do to me, is all over town this very minute and in the right places. If we went to court tomorrow, I could prove on unimpeachable evidence that you have hired detectives to dig into my past to substantiate false accusations you have made against me. Accusations, I may add, which happen to be anything but false. But you can't prove them, Nikki, and never will. Are you standing there telling me that you did... That you are... A murderer? Oh, yes. Oh, Oh, you're altogether right. I did murder them. All three. Your sister Alicia included. Oh. But, you see, all three murders were so cleverly engineered and executed that no one would ever believe I had done them, let alone succeed in proving that I had. My God. To stand there and tell me, to my face... That you're a murderer. That you murdered my sister. As I shall murder Amanda Jordan. Thus executing another perfect crime. A murder to perfection, you might say. Uh, What are you doing? I'm phoning Amanda. Phoning phoning Amanda? To tell her that I'm going to kill her? Please, don't, don't be a fool. Put the phone down. No. All right. Go ahead. Amanda. Amanda, this is Nikki Carpenter. Nikki Carpenter... Yes. Amanda, are you... (laughs) Amanda, can you understand me? Smash, I could have told you that. Amanda, listen, listen to me. That'll be the day. Amanda, please listen carefully now. Guy is here with me in my apartment. And he has just told me that he intends to murder you. Yes, I know you're going to marry him. That's the point of what I'm telling you. He's, He's... No, I'm not inventing it. I am not a jealous fool. She... Oh, she... She didn't believe you? In her hazy, alcoholic way? Oh, you are evil. You are a devil. I haven't hesitated to tell you what I do, Nikki, because there's no way ever you can prove anything. But there's every way I can prove that you've damaged my career and altogether left yourself open to what are called punitive damages. A great big lump of punitive damages. You evil... And if what I've told you fails to persuade you to call off the hounds, I can still take one more step. One more step? Kill you, Nikki. Oh. Kill you. And no one the wiser. Imagination. It plays like heat lightning in dark and ominous skies inside the heads of two people, Nicky Carpenter and Guy Weston, each seeking to combat, to outwit the other. The imaginative force within Nicky is good, that within Guy, evil. 
Certainly at the moment, it would appear that Nikki is helpless. That guy has her where he wants her. That she must lose the battle. He win. Well, we'll see when I return shortly with Act Two. No such thing as the perfect crime. If that's what you've always thought, think again. For it certainly appears that Guy Weston knows how to murder to perfection. He is so sure of himself that he's candidly told his brother's fiancée, Nikki Carpenter, that he not only murdered her sister, but two previous wives. Furthermore, he's freely admitted that he intends to murder his next wife, Amanda Jordan, and may even do away with Nikki. Do you mean to say that he stood there and confessed to you? Not he... confessed. He bragged. He boasted. Flaunted their murders in my face. And said he intended to murder Amanda after they married. Oh, I can't believe this, Nicky. I just can't. He's hit on a way of committing the perfect murder. Nonsense. Bill, listen no, to me. No, Nicky, you listen to me. I don't know what's caused all this. I, I know you're overtired. I know you're knocking yourself out to get your next fashion show ready. But whatever it is, Nicky, dear, stop it. Stop what? These... These imaginings of yours, these, these wild accusations about my brother being a murderer, a perfect murderer yet. Bill, he killed Alicia. He did not kill Alicia. Alicia fell or jumped from a 12-story window when Guy was in his office miles away. So how in heaven's name could he have killed her? I don't know. That's what I'm hoping the private detective I hired will come up with. You're still using a private detective? Of course. I warned you, Guy will sue you for everything you've got on grounds of slander, defamation of character, and win. I know. He told me that himself. He also said that if I push him far enough, he might even murder me. I'm just not going to believe this. I, I can't believe it. I'd be an absolute nut to believe it. As nutty as... As, as me? Huh? Is that what you're saying? I see. Well, in that case, Bill, I think... I'd better give this back. You're giving me back our engagement ring? Yes. Nikki, Nikki, you're like... No, no, no. I am not overtired. I am not letting my imagination run away with me. I did not create or invent what I just told you about Guy coming to see me. It's true, every word of it. Nikki. Please. He will kill Amanda if I can't stop him. And he'll kill me if, as he puts it, I don't call off the hounds. Well, Bill, I may be a nut with an imagination that's running wild. But I'd say Guy wants me to call off the hounds because he's scared to death they'll run him to the ground. And I'm betting that they will. Betting everything I have. My fortune. My career. My life! You ask me, she needs a psychiatrist. She's just terribly tired, exhausted. So because she's tired, I'm supposed to let her slander me? Wreck my career, my life? Do you know that because of that crazy phone call Nikki made to Amanda, Amanda almost called off our engagement? Well, she didn't. You're married. No harm done. Hello, Amanda. Nikki. Amanda, I'm just calling to tell you that Guy's going to murder you after you're married. Now, that's a hell of a thing to say. I mean, that's just a plain hell of a thing. And when that tape is played in court... Tape? What tape? Oh. Uh, Amanda had a tape recorder hooked to her phone. That automatically taped messages. She's an alcoholic, you know, and most of the time she can't remember who called her about what, so she records all conversations. Guy, do me a favor, will you? Destroy that tape and call off your suit against Nikki. Oh, Bill, I can't. The, the accusations she's made, everybody knows about them. Nobody believes them, of course. At least, I hope nobody believes them. But she's made a laughing stock of me, Bill. I just can't sit back and do nothing to protect myself. I suppose not. Well, thanks for your time, Guy. I'll see you. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yes? Oh, well, hell, you're my brother... I'll do it for you. You will? Yes, but with one proviso, Bill. Name it. One more word out of her about me. 
One more crazy accusation, and I'll nail it to the wall. So help me, I will. There'll be no more accusations. I'll see to that. Somehow, I'll convince her. Excuse me. Yes, Miss Mason. Captain? And the police? Well, sure, of course, put him through. Now, what can this be about? Yes, Captain, this is Guy Weston. You're calling from my home? But what are you doing? Of course I can come home right now, but what's happened? Captain, stop beating about the bush. What the hell has happened? When? What? You're sure? Oh, yes, I'll be there as fast as I can make it. What? What? Amanda dead. Dead? Amanda? He said the, the captain, the combination of alcohol and sleeping pills. Oh. Okay, easy. Okay. Easy. Oh. Look, I, I'll, I'll go home with you. Yes. Please, get my hat and coat. Here, your coat. Let me help you. Thanks. Oh, Bill, I guess you know this means I can't call off my suit against Nikki. Because Amanda's dead? Nikki's accusations, everybody will believe they're true now. Well, I've got to prove they're not. I'm going through with the suit, Bill. I have no option. What do you wait, want? Wait, 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 wait a minute, Nikki. Don't close the door. Let me in. I'd as soon let in a snake. <laughs> if I was afraid of snakes, I'd want to keep an eye on them. Know what they're up to. You better let me in, Nikki. <sighs> All right, guy. Make it quick. No, don't sit down. You won't be staying that long. Oh, I think I will. I got a lot to say to you, Nick. Well, then say it and get out. First thing I want to say is that, of course, Amanda's death was no accident. I know that. The second thing I want to say is yours won't be either. What? You've gone white. Well, I can't say I blame you. I'd be scared, too, if someone told me I was going to kill myself. Oh, I'm going to kill myself. Commit suicide, in it, just like that. Mm -hmm, just like that. And you're going to see to that? I am. And what reason will I have for taking my own life? Guilt. Shame. Guilt? Shame over what? Of making false accusations against a certain guy, Weston. Me. The accusations I made against you were true, not false. So why should I feel any guilt or any shame? Yeah. Nikki, you are going to murder yourself, uh, so to speak, just as my European wives did, as Alicia did, as Amanda did. Since you're going to be my next victim, I should think you'd like to know how it's all going to be accomplished. I am not in the least interested. I'm going to tell you anyway. I've said this before, and I apologize if I bore you, but I am quite possibly the only person in the world who has discovered how to commit the perfect murder. Would you believe that I found myself taking karate lessons in Japan when I was there? Now, so help me, I did. And suddenly, one day, the thought crossed my mind. If you can use an opponent's physical strength or weakness against him, why can't his mental strength or weakness be used against him as well? The answer, quite simply, is, of course, it can. I don't see how... You will. You will, my darling, you will. Now, consider Alicia... I had only to find her weakness to ensure her death. And I did. Her weakness was agoraphobia. That's the intense fear of heights. The reason such people fear heights is because they have a powerful, often overwhelming compulsion to throw themselves off into space. Well, such was Alicia's weakness. The weakness that I turned against her. How? Oh. Simply by laughing at her, showing contempt for her fears, taunting her for her inability even to go near a high window. I needled her, goaded her, irritated her until to strike back at me, to prove me wrong, she would go to that 12-story window of our apartment again and again and open the window and stand looking down at the traffic far, far below and say to me, see, I can do it. Oh. And she did. Until the day I knew would come sooner or later 
The day her nerve broke, compulsion overcame her, and she threw herself to her death. Oh, you... Now, wait, no, 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 oh, no, 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 and sleeping pills. My first step in murdering her was merely to replace her pills with placebos, which, of course, had no effect. Now, when she complained, I told her she probably needed stronger sleeping pills and saw to it that she got them, along with plenty to drink, you understand. Her death was a foregone conclusion. Once again, using my victim's weakness against her, she killed herself. And I, the real murderer, remain scot-free. And I... I'm your next victim. You are. You'll be dead within two weeks. In fact, you don't know it, but you've already written your suicide note. On this. That's one of those shirt pocket tape recorders. That is, you see, I was carrying in my shirt pocket. Everything we've said to each other since I came through that door has been recorded on this tape. Yes, but I did not record a suicide note. Correction. Uh, You will have. Once I have edited and altered the tape, then re-recorded it. I'll let you hear it. Well, that's the least I can do. And perhaps you, you'd be good enough to tell me what strength or weakness of mine you intend to use against me. With you, no weakness. Strength. Which is... Come on, you know your strong point as well as I do. You tell me. It's my imagination. Precisely. Within two weeks or less, Nikki. You're going to be dead, murdered, by your own imagination. Murdered by her own imagination? How in the world can that be done? Come to think of it, people have been killed by terror, by sudden fear, overwhelming panic. But it can't happen that way with Nikki. She's too strong, too self-controlled. What way, then? What plan has Guy in mind? We'll find out shortly when I return with Act Three. Imagination kill you? Murderer Guy Weston says it can, and since he's been eminently successful in doing away with a number of victims, it would appear that Nicky Carpenter is about to become his latest. He won't kill her. Oh, no, no. She will kill herself. The instrument of death being her own imagination. Up to now, Guy Weston has murdered to perfection. Up to now. Hello? Hello, Nikki. This is Guy. No, no, don't hang up. Oh. I want to play your suicide note to you. If you think you can scare me... Scare you? That's not my purpose at all, Nikki. I simply want to keep you in touch. Now then, here's the first step to your murdering yourself. Listen. The accusations I made against Guy Weston were false. I feel guilt, shame. I'm going to kill myself, commit suicide. There it is, Nikki. Your suicide note in your own voice, recorded by you on the tape recorder, that will be found in your apartment. You vile, evil... Bye for now, Nikki. (gasps) Now, Nikki... Bill! Oh, Bill, you've got to help me. Well, of got course, to. of course I will, sweetheart. I'm so sorry I broke our engagement. That was stupid of me. But I was so upset and frustrated. Don't but you it... think I realize that? <laughs> the nice thing about a broken engagement is that it's easily repaired by putting the ring back on the girl's finger. Now hold out that pretty hand of yours, young lady. <laughs> oh, Bill. And now a kiss <laughs> to make sure the repair holds. <laughs> Oh, that's a repair that'll hold forever. It will, my darling, it will. Now then, new fashion season or no new fashion season, you're going to take a week off. A week off? At least a few days. Get away from work, out from all the pressure you've been under. Bill, what are you saying? I'm saying that I'm going to take you up to my place on the lake for a long weekend. See that you rest, relax, and recuperate from the heavy workload you've been... 
Well, what is it? You haven't believed a word I said. Well, now, Nikki. No, everything I've told you. Guy admitting he's a murderer, saying he's going to see that I kill myself, the fake suicide note he tricked me into taping. You don't believe any of that. Nikki, sweetheart, we've been through all this. But you broke your engagement to me because of it. Now, don't... Please, will you believe me? Will you please believe that what I'm telling you is true? Your brother Guy is a murderer. He murdered my sister Alicia by tricking her into jumping out of a window. And he murdered Amanda, as he said he would. And as I told you, he would. Amanda died from combining alcohol with sleeping pills. Sleeping pills pills that were any number of times stronger than anything she ever took before. Your brother murders people by tricking them into murdering themselves. And he's told me that he's going to do the same to me. By maneuvering you into killing yourself with your own imagination? Vicky, be reasonable. You know you'll do no such thing. Sure, sure, you're a highly imaginative woman, but you're also a very practical, down-to-earth woman. If only I could convince you Let that... me convince you of something. Convince you that one of the best things you could possibly do would be to... Yes? To what? Have dinner with me tonight, then go to the theater afterward. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Look, I'll pick you up at 6.30. Cocktails, dinner, and any play or musical you want to see. Date? Oh. Date. Oh, uh, excuse me. My name is Bill Weston, and I believe I have a date for dinner in the theater with a very charming young woman. <laughs> yes, you have. And is she ready? Just about. All she has to do is put on her hat and gloves. Not before she gives her husband to be a kiss. What? Spoil my makeup? Uh-uh. <laughs> you have to wait till we get back. Ah, something to look forward to. <laughs> hey, snazzy hat. You do something for her. <laughs> Thank you. Ow! What's that? Ooh. There's something in the finger of this glove. Look, my finger's bleeding. I see. Oh, your finger's cut. Well, how could I possibly cut my finger on a glove? Right, just a sec. Turn the glove inside out. Huh. Well, how did this get inside your glove? What? What is it? I don't see it. Oh, it's so small. You can't hardly see it. A, a tiny bit of glass. Well, how could anything like that get inside my glove? I don't know, but... Oh, dear. Excuse me. Hello? Guy, Nicky. Yes? Brother Bill told me he's taking you to dinner in the theater tonight. So what of it? Nikki, don't wear gloves tonight. Don't wear... Oh, oh dear. I'm too late. You've already put them on, have you? And cut your finger. Yes. Oh, well, just a scratch. I mean, nothing to worry about. Unless the bit of glass inside your glove was poisoned. Poisoned? Hello? Hello? Honey, what is it? He hung up. Who? Your brother Guy. My murderer. Nikki. Hmm. How do you feel? Sick. My headaches. My stomach's upset. But if Dr. Wells said he could discover no signs of poison... He won't be sure until he's tested the blood sample he took. Why doesn't he phone? Or rather, the doctor. Hello? Yes, doctor. Oh, good, good. Well, doctor, we appreciate your coming over and all you've done. Thanks again, doctor. Not a trace of poison, Nikki. But why do I feel so awful? I guess because you thought you might have been poisoned. <laughs> But you weren't, honey. It was just all in your... Say it, Bill. It was all in my... imagination. Then you admit, Guy, you admit you telephoned Nicky last night. What is this, Bill? Some kind of inquisition? You walk into my office the first thing in the morning and start shooting questions at me as if I... as if I were guilty of something. Yes! I did phone Nicky last night. What about it? What did you phone her about? To tell her I was withdrawing the suit I brought against her for defamation of character. You are withdrawing it? Yeah, I know. I said I'd have to go through with it, but... Well, you are my brother. And she is your fiancée, and oh, 
Well, hell, I just I just couldn't go through with it, that's all. And that's what you found her about. What else would I found her about? Well, forget it, Kai. Forget it. <laughs> We're three in the morning. Who can be coming? Hello? Nikki, listen. The accusations I made against Guy Weston were false. I feel guilt, shame. I'm going to kill myself. Commit suicide. Pleasant dreams, Nikki. Pleasant dreams. Oh, no. Oh, no. I ask you, all of you, who you think you are. I mean, I am Nikki Carpenter. I created the Nikki Carpenter collection and not you. Nikki, please. Oh, shut up. I've heard enough out of all of you. Now, you listen to me. When I ask for black mousseline, I want black mousseline. And when I ask for white file, I want white file. I don't care what your reason is. Don't change my orders. Now, get out of here, all of you. There's a lot of you. Get out. Get out. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Please. Please, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, please. Please. <laughs> Yes? Yes, put him through. Yes, Dr. Welch. Well, I'm worried about her, too. She's not sleeping, not eating, a bundle of nerves. I I'm wondering if you could recommend a good psychiatrist. Why? Because I think she's in need of psychiatric help. Huh? Well, I'll certainly come to see you. When? Right. Be in your office in half an hour. some very funny things, Bill. I know you killed Nikki. You what? I know you killed her, made her kill herself, drove her to it. <sighs> Bill, I... I think you could use a drink. You can use a lawyer. Get yourself one. I've got you with the goods, brother. What are you talking about? I was there in Nikki's apartment when you called and told her about the gun. I heard every word on the phone extension. I made a point of staying with her constantly. 
after a little conference I had with Dr. Welsh, Nikki's physician, who convinced me that she was as sane as I am, living on the edge of nerves, nerves rubbed raw, driven to the end of her rope, her emotional rope, and imagining things. You were there when I phoned? Oh, what's with that guy? I went to your place, found the original tape, the one you recorded her suicide note from. You're lying. Am I? You couldn't have found the original tape. I destroyed it. Then there was an original. What? Uh, you just admitted there was an original tape from which you recorded, edited, altered, and re-recorded Nikki's suicide note. All right. All right, you're so bloody damn smart. All right. I did kill her the way I killed the others, by, by using their weaknesses, their strengths, so they would kill themselves. So do me something. Huh? Prove something. So I slipped. I admitted there was an original tape, so what? Who heard me say it? You? Me? Her? She is dead. No, God. I'm alive. I'm very much alive. Vicky? You have been tricked this time. I did not kill myself. It was all faked. Once I was convinced Nikki was telling the truth, trapping you, Guy, was simple. Trapping me? You haven't trapped me. But we have. You've admitted everything. Who heard me? You? Her? And you, Guy. You. You think I'd testify against myself in a court of law? Testify against myself? As a matter of fact, you will. You're crazy. But this isn't. A tape recorder. A shirt pocket tape recorder. You used this same little device to drive Nikki to suicide and failed. I'll use it to send you to jail. And, Guy, I'll succeed. And so, imagination. This time, not only Nikki's, but Bill's imagination. The most powerful force on Earth, for good or ill, brings an insidiously clever murderer to ground. I'll be back shortly. first joined me, I spoke of imagination as a world of fantasy, then corrected myself to say it is a world of reality. I'd like to correct myself again. It is truly a world of fantasy and reality. Question is, which is it? When? Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, John Newland, and Joseph Campanella. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Joe. Gang? Joe, there's something crazy going on in this house. Something real crazy. Now, Amy, honey. Joe, Joe, listen to me. There's something wrong. I don't know what it's all about. I don't know, I don't know what's happening, but Jack says he never saw me before in his life. What? And never proposed marriage to me, and he did it. She, her, his wife, she came to my bedroom with an axe in her hand. For chimney's sake, hold it. Amy, you're not making sense. Oh, I know I'm not because what's happening here, what, what, what's happened to me, it doesn't make sense. Will somebody explain this, Joe? A mistake of some kind has been made. A mistake? Your sister, she... Well, I, I haven't wanted to spell this out in so many words, but... Since you're here now and can take care of her, I'm afraid your sister is crazy. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Chicago.